of past political conventions, things that worked, <laughs> things that didn't work so well, areas that could be improved upon. We brought individuals from Minneapolis and St. Paul down here to specifically speak with them about what worked. And we sent uh, officers up to the Chicago event, the NATO event there, to see firsthand how these, these um, tactics work in the crowd management with the large crowds at an event uh, uh, such as the RNC. And Minneapolis St. Paul readily uh, say that they made some mistakes. One of the issues that they had is that their crowd management and the rest of the officers were basically segregated geographically and by radio. They weren't on the same frequencies, so they really didn't know what was going on. <coughs> the first day of the event, they put all their resources along the parade route because they thought that's where all the energy was. And groups went to different areas in the downtown and uh, started disrupting and, and uh, destroying some city property, and there was miscommunication. So by the time they got the resources over there, they had kind of lost control of the, uh, the event. And again, we're going to have officers throughout the downtown area. We'll all be communicating in real time with each other. We'll also be communicating with all of you in real time. A lot of you have signed up for the the um, software application, the NC4, where we're able to tell you what's going on in your geographic block, specifically with crowds, with uh, you know suspicious activity, with traffic issues. We're allowed to communicate that, or able to communicate that to you, and then you can communicate to us as well things that are going on in your neighborhood that you think we need to be aware of. They didn't have any of that up in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and as a result. They had some issues the first day and the last day of the event, and they made um, some mass arrests they had up in Minneapolis-St. Paul. And that is our desire to avoid any circumstance like that. There are going to be arrests made. There's no doubt about it. There are individuals that are coming here with the intent to be arrested. That's going to occur. So go ahead and play the video. <coughs> He's telling everybody to disperse here, and you'll see our communication uh, apparatus later, and I think you'll be able to hear it from here to downtown. So <laughs> you'll definitely be able to hear any of the orders given. This is going to be uh, choppy. This happened in one of the other presentations as well. group of protesters and they've all got bike barricades with the banners on the front and they're counting down from 10 down and then they're rushing a, a group that includes the media and uh, other um, citizens. This is where they're trying to get them out of the street and they, um, th these are some of the items that in the event zone, all of the items that are banned from the event zone and from the public viewing are items that have been used in the past uh, for destructive purposes. And this is where the cavalry's coming in, and there's a uh, an individual, one of the protesters actually runs up and runs up onto the top of one of the police cars and comes uh, running back down. <coughs> but all of those items, that's the reason that we've banned the, uh, the bike locks. This is an overpass, one of the the tactics of the uh, uh, anarchists is to try to keep the delegates from, from getting to the convention, and they are throwing uh, bags of cement and five-gallon buckets full of water over the overpass onto the vehicles trying to disrupt the, uh, the traffic flow. And then this is some of the destruction that occurred. They're breaking windows and things in the, um, the downtown St. Paul uh, area. So that's the reason for the banned items. And obviously, a large part of every officer's um, daily activity is discretion. And we will be exercising a great deal of discretion during the RNC. You know, the fact that somebody has a bike lock 
isn't they're they're not going to automatically be arrested. Obviously, there's got to be something to go with that that indicates that they are going to use that as a weapon. It may be confiscated with no charges. So there's going to be a great deal of discretion <coughs> used uh, during the the RNC. You can go ahead and turn that on. We have done everything that we can to communicate. You know, you guys are all here this morning so we can communicate with you and show you exactly how we plan to uh, make this a secure event. We have also communicated with all of the individuals that are, or the majority of the individuals that are coming to town to demonstrate. We've participated in two uh, panels with the ACLU. I did an hour and a half call-in webinar, national webinar with the uh, ACLU. And really the ACLU is singing our song. They're telling everyone that they will not tolerate uh, criminal activity or behavior and that everyone is expected to follow the lawful orders of law enforcement. And they're telling everybody that anybody, that individuals are coming to town with the intent to get everybody stirred up. They'll be in the crowds, they'll try to get everybody incited to do things that they wouldn't normally do.